Good morning, good morning, good morning. At least it's morning for me. Um, I always start my class with a corny dad joke, and here's today's. A truck loaded with Vicks Vapor Rub overturned on the highway. Amazingly, there was no congestion for eight hours. But um, bum. All right. If uh, anyone who is uh, able would like to take two deep breaths with me, two deep healing breaths, preferably with your eyes closed, but however you feel safe. In the nose, out through the mouth. And do it as slow or as fast as you like. One more time. All right. Awesome. So today I'm going to be uh, reading <laughs> a little bit about uh, grief and anger. Anger and grief are two strong emotions that often accompany one another. All humans feel anger and grief. And if, if left untreated and such strong emotions, if left unexpressed, endanger one's health and relationships. Repressed anger is a hallmark of complex, uh, complex post-traumatic stress disorder and many other uh, emotional problems. So what is grief? Grief is a strong emotion triggered by sadness over a loss, such as the death of someone you love, um, a life-altering negative health diagnosis, a lost child, a lost childhood, or the loss of a dream, such as the case in betrayal. People experiencing grief may feel numb and removed from their daily life. They may feel overwhelmed and unable to carry on with their life, such as doing their daily chores, and feel a deep sense of loss. Grief is a universal yet personal experience and a natural reaction to loss, loss of any kind, like I said. One cannot escape grief as sooner or later you will be handed something in life that will send your mind reeling. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. Grief follows a predictable course called the five stages. Now, obvious, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, Elizabeth Keebler Ross, I think, came up with the five stages. Uh, I've also heard there's uh, six or eight. And then there's another theory out there where there's 12 stages of grief. But I'm just going to stick with the original one, which is Elizabeth Keebler Ross. Um, now, although I'm going to go over these uh, linearly, um, these stages and phases do not always conform to the list as people move in and out of each stage differently. Um, there are five stages of Greece, uh, of Greece, of grief, um, as identified by um, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, and the stages are here. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then finally acceptance. Of course, acceptance doesn't mean all is good in the hood. It just means, okay, this was, these were the hands I was dealt with. How am I going to play my, play my cards? So denial, denial helps us survive um, a loss that we've experienced. During this stage, you're in a state of shock and you may feel overwhelmed and the world seems meaningless. You enter a state of shock and go numb. You also feel that you have no sense of security and wonder how you can go on after experiencing this loss. Denial is helpful in that it is nature's way of allowing you to experience only as much as you can handle. During denial, you may ask yourself questions and in doing so are unwittingly beginning the healing process. Personally, I thought our bodies are so interesting. Like I talk one time about betrayal blindness and it's our, our, our body's way of not handling all of the disclosure at once because it would just really burst our mind. And so sometimes, unfortunately, but fortunately, our body allows trickle truth because um, seriously, like the, the, it, some information just can push us over the edge. I mean, the majority does regardless, but, and it's the same thing with denial. It's like, you know, when we are in denial, it's, it's interesting because it's our body's way of actually comforting us. It, um, it's, it's only allowing certain amount of information in at a time so that we're not overwhelmed, even though we are tremendously overwhelmed, you know, with the information that we have. But I just think our body is really magnificent. It, it really does um, uh, self-clean and self-heal. Anger. I'll tell you something. When, uh, years ago, when I was betrayed, this was, this was my Achilles heel, anger. Oh, I had anger, not, not even anger, profound rage. All right, enough about me. Anger is not only the topic of this uh, piece, but also a necessary stage in the healing process. It is essential to feel and, um, and safely express your anger after a loss. 
even though it seems the anger will never go away. If you cannot express your anger healthily, you will build up anger and it will not go away if not expressed. And then it turns into resentment and contempt. And then if the person's not even in your life anymore, such as a death or a breakup or a divorce or what have you, um, uh, it's very difficult to express anger because now it's like, okay, I'm expressing anger to the air. Yeah, it feels good, but <laughs> sometimes you need that connection so you feel that the other person feels what they did and that can help. But anyway, uh, you may always feel some angst about what has happened, but if you can feel anger and work through it, the anger will not become a problem that affects you physically and mentally. Um, I say all the time, the most difficult apology um, uh, or the most difficult thing to forgive was the, um, the forgiveness that was never asked. Okay, bargaining. In this stage, we become lost in the if only or the what ifs. This is bargaining. As we question what has happened to us, we want our loved ones to come back or we want the person that we once knew to come back. Sometimes we feel guilty over what has occurred. Often the thought of if only causes us to feel that we should have done something to change the outcome. Uh, perhaps we should have done this or that. Uh, we try to negotiate with God or do anything to heal the pain. I remember, uh, again, here I am talking about myself. What else is new? Um, when I was going through my betrayal, uh, I I used to be in a fetal position and be begging God, God, can you turn back the hands of time? Can you please turn back the hands of time? Um, that was bargaining and probably anger and probably depression, which is the next one. After going through the bargaining stage, we find ourselves living in the present without our loved ones or what we thought was once our loved ones. We feel empty and grief becomes deeper than we ever imagined. We feel we will never be happy in this state, which is an appropriate response after a significant loss. Often those in this stage feel that they are immersed in the feelings of intense sadness and wondering what purpose we have to move forward. I find this uh, quite often uh, in a lot of these stages, we often question our purpose. W what is my purpose? Um, depression may be thought of as something you should be ashamed of and that you should uh, be able to snap out of yourself. But the truth is that not experiencing the depression after a loss would be unnatural. Because again, certain emotions trigger certain functions and so if, you know, anger triggers certain things in our body that tells our body, okay, we need help in this area. Depression triggers, you know, other things in our body that tells our body, okay, we need to step it up in this area, you know, whatever it is, releasing dopamines or, you know, whatever the case is. So it is a necessary, um, but awful, awful stage <laughs> uh, that depression is not um, uh, fun. None of these are fun at all. Um, even the acceptance stage is not fun, to be honest with you, which is the last one here. People often confuse acceptance with the thought that um, you are now all right and that all is good in the hood. And most people never feel okay with the loss that they've experienced and they accept the reality that the past cannot be changed. I mean, that's what really acceptance is. It's not, you know, oh, let me get out of bells and get, get out of bed and do bells. It's not that. It's just that, well, I, I guess this is the reality of it. You know, now where am I going to go from here? That's acceptance. Um, uh, you learn to live with your new reality and learn to live with the knowledge that we have uncovered um, or learn to live without our loved one. During this healing stage, we may finally have more good days than bad days and begin planning for the future. You know, it's interesting because anytime we're healing from anything, whether it's betrayal or a loss or, you know, and, and obviously betrayal is a loss, no, whatever. Um, it, it's interesting because these, it, it, it's not like a course in college. Okay. I did my final, I got my grade next course. That's not how these stages go. Sometimes you're in and out of different stages. It's like, you know, I can be in bargaining and anger or acceptance and a little bit of anger or depression. And, you know, so you, you, and it's very slow, very slow. I was on a podcast last night and I was telling the host that, um, uh, years ago, I was dating a flight attendant who 
um, broke my heart unimaginably. Oh my Lord, broke my heart unimaginably. And we lived right near an, an airport. And for months and months, I every day I had to hear the planes taking off and landing and go. And every every single time I heard that noise, which was often because I lived near an airport, um, it was like I was walking outside in acid rain. Um, it was torturous. It was torturous. Now, I love planes. I look at them going by. I, I didn't even think about it. So um, healing but that took lord have mercy probably decades well a little over a decade um so healing is slow these things are slow you're not going to do one and then you know a week later get into the next um thing now for some people they can do that but it's very rare these are a very slow process you almost don't even notice unless you're being conscious about it that you're going from one stage to the next you don't even notice it it's extremely slow okay um People think the stages of grief will last months because, and they forget that it all depends on the needs of the individual. For some, it can only take days or weeks for each stage, and for others, months or years as you go in and out of these stages. Um, and I'll tell you something. Sometimes you can go through um, the the last stage that you think, you know, and again, these are, even though I said them linearly, they, they, they're, you know, you can experience them at any point. Sometimes you can think, you know, years out of it, say, okay, whoo, okay, I, I, I've been the, um, bargaining. I've done the anger. I've done the depression. I've done the shock. I've done the acceptance. And then all of a sudden, years later, you're looking through pictures or you're in your garage looking through a toolbox. And all of a sudden you see something and one of those stages smacks you across the face. And you're like, wait a minute, I thought I was beyond this stage. Well, you are, but you're also human. And you know that visual representation of a time and place that you once were incapacitated um, you know, that can bring back that feeling, right? You may have noticed that one of the stages of grief is anger. Um, if you are a survivor of trauma of any point, you may hold anger or even rage close to your heart. Anger is an emotion that all humans share. And it's, he it's a healthy barometer that tells us that uh, there is a need that we have not met or that an issue needs to be dealt with. I always say when it comes to our emotions, our triggers, our flashbacks, whatever, uh, ask, okay, wh what do you need? You know, because there's usually a need that comes with it. When we begin to continue the work through the anger we feel from trauma, we experience many, many emotions. And I'm sure we can all identify with these impatience, frustration, rage, irritability, resentment, loss of control, cynicism, pessimism, and probably a whole slew of others. You're thinking during the anger stage of grief, um, uh, it, it often turns to thoughts such as this isn't fair. Why is this happening to me? Or why did this happen to me? And um, am I to blame for any of this? Am I to blame for this? You know, what role was, my, uh, was mine in this? We may even feel that we want revenge on the one or ones who hurt us. Um, at, and it's sad because sometimes if there's a loss from a death or so, a divorce and somebody moved away, what revenge are you going to get? Not that revenge is healthy, but I'm saying if you're in that mode and you want to, that would make you feel satisfied. Um, if somebody's completely out of your life for whatever reason, what revenge can you get? You know, At best, dealing with the anger you feel when dealing with trauma is difficult. The anguish and despair that happens while coping with anger is intense and justified. After all, what happened to you was horrific and you have every reason to be angry because your life has been deeply affected. Um, I say all the time when we are traumatized or betrayed, um, our choices were completely robbed from us. And, um, and uh, that causes a whole domino effect of uh, anguish. We wouldn't have made the choices this other person did. And so we were completely stripped and robbed of um, our, our empowerment to make choices. Now we're forced to make choices that we never wanted to make. So it's frustrating and infuriating. You can do some things to help with your anger you are feeling after trauma or betrayal. Here's a couple of quick things that you know you may or may not um, be doing already. Allow yourself to feel angry. A lot of times people are like, you know, oh, I shouldn't feel angry. Angry is a negative emotion, blah, 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 blah. It's a necessary emotion. Find a safe place with a supportive person and allow yourself to cry, feel, and think about what's happened to you. It's okay to be angry. 
Um, recognize your feelings other than anger. Feelings of being overwhelmed and sad are often masked as irrit irritability and anger. It is vital to identify the trauma you experienced and may require the aid of a coach or a counselor. Do not ignore how you are feeling. Suppressing your anger causes them to emerge in other less desirable ways. And I'm telling you something, <laughs> ooh, anger is like a ball inside our bodies, almost like trauma. It, it, it will go inside our body and like lava everywhere it travels, it will destroy everything in its path. So, you know, anger gives us a false sense of empowerment. Think about it. Every time we get angry, we feel a little empowered, but it's a false sense of empowerment because when we are angry, we are most vulnerable because we're not making decisions from a logical, rational, mature place. You may externalize anger um, towards others and turn it inward. And that's what happens a lot of times inward. And then we're, then we're dealing with all that, you know, massive amounts of lava inside our body. Um, but if it's unchecked, if anger goes unchecked, it could easily turn into depression, which is why anger is a necessary emotion that you must work through. If not, it very well can turn into depression because anger is uh, usually, ex it's expressed outward. But if we keep it in, then um, it's internal anger that easily, easily morphs into depression. That's just what happens. Allow yourself to experience anger before it escalates to aggression against yourself or others. Um, and I, I don't know about any of you watching, but um, one of the things you, I found, I'll just say this, I'll use I statements. Um, ooh, I wanted to hurt the people that hurt me. I, I did. Um, and it, unfortunately, it was a lot because of my childhood. Um, we weren't given many tools on uh, healthy emotional development. So when I got angry, I, I, I was vengeful. I wanted revenge, um, which is not a good emotional, healthy, emotionally healthy coping mechanism or tool. But um, this is why, you know, people say all the time, uh, the feelings of anger uh, and, and grief are universal but they're also personal. You know, some people that are angry um, uh, just want to go in the bathroom and cry. Other people, they're ready to get into the boxing ring. I mean, you know, so it's definitely personal. Um, bum, bum, bum. Find ways to express um, how you're feeling. So if you cannot verbalize your feelings, try using it in art or poetry or other artlets um, to express your anger. I like to sing. Man, I'll, I will belt out a song when I'm angry and whoo, I feel much better afterwards. Once anger is safely expressed, you will find that you can accept what's happened to you. So basically anger and grief are normal and natural emotions to feel after betrayal. You feel anger for what happened to you and the grief for the life or the experiences that you were not allowed to have. Again, that were robbed from you. Your choices were robbed from you. Don't forget that during the healing process, you must take good care of yourself by permitting yourself to weep. Tears are cleansing. Again, your body feels something. It triggers a healthy response in your body to heal. Tears come up. They found chemicals in your tears that actually help your body or that, that need to get released. So cry it out. Issues are in the tissues. We all know that. Your tears are a vital tool for healing as they will wash away the remnants of the past, allowing you to move into a better future. Um, and I just want to end this class with a quote from uh, Jonathan Mast Marterson. Feelings are much like waves. We can't stop them from coming, but we can choose which ones to surf. And I say all the time, you know, even with triggers and stuff, um, we can't necessarily uh, prevent what comes into our head, but there's tools and things that we can do to um, not allow it to stay there. You know, we are all landlords and landladies. So um, we can evict people that come into our, 